Sunday, the third quarter of the year 2023. King of kings and Lord of lords, speak to and through me. And let the words of my mouth, spoken as your oracle, and the meditations of the hearts of your people, be acceptable unto you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. We give God all the glory for the great things He has done. And if we look at the weather, there is a clear indication that we are moving towards the end of the year 2023. Today is the first, is the Sunday in the 39th week, 39. So including this week that has started today, there are in all 14 more weeks, including this one. So by the time it's Saturday, if Jesus started, there'll be only 13 more weeks in the year 2023. So one thing is clear, the number of weeks left are less than half. In fact, just about one third of the number of weeks we have gone through. Amen. Because if you divide the 39 into three, you get 13. When we finish 39, you have 13. The same God who has seen us through up until this point, we see us through in the remaining weeks and months of this year. And at the end of this year, every one of us, the members of our families, will have reasons to glorify his holy name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us open our Bibles to the epistle that was read this morning. Philippians chapter 2, verses 21 and 22 and 23. Let's look, let's, let's look at all three. I want everyone to just look at your own Bibles, your own versions, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister that text to you as I read. For to me, to continue living on this side of eternity is Christ. And to be translated to eternal life is gain. But if I am to live on in this flesh, this will mean fruitful labor to me. Yet, I do not know what I should choose. I'm in a difficult position between the two. Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ which is far better, far better. So let's add verse 24 for emphasis. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful and expedient for all of you. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord. Oh, I'll be somewhere walking. I'll be somewhere walking. I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord. Oh, I'll be somewhere. Walking, I'll be somewhere. Walking, I'll be somewhere. Walking for my Lord. Paul's epistle to the church in Philippi is one of his epistles of excellence. Highly theological, but also highly practical. If you look at the text, God had led Apostle Paul to a point of his pilgrimage on earth that there was nothing on earth again left for him. Nothing on earth would give him so much pleasure as he will have to be translated to the other side. He had 
technically dissociated himself from everything and anything this world had to offer. It is interesting if you listen to a lot of spiritualists today. I use that term, okay? I use it in a generic form. Those who seek to be reconciled to God by whichever channel or way, they always talk about detaching yourself from this temporal world, this transient world, this world that is passing away, that will fade away. That's what they talk, they talk about, all of them. And Apostle Paul here was expressing that he had gotten to a point in his journey that he could boldly say that for him to be translated from this temporal world is gain. But we need to also listen to the heart of the man. Let's listen to the heart of the man. If you look at this, he says in verse 23, and I like the way my version puts it, I'm in a difficult position between the two because he's already told you, look, for him to be translated at this point, it's more gainful to him. He continues eternity on a side where nobody's judging him, on a side where he doesn't need to pay bills. You know, bills, bills, bills everywhere. On a side where he does not need to struggle. On a side where he can rest until rapture day. But then he also realized that if he remained here, he said it is more useful, it is more expedient for you that I remain in the flesh. It's more needful for you because there is so much revelation, so much anointing that I need to share. And, and of course, it's obvious today, out of 27 books of the New Testament, there is no controversy. He wrote 13. And Hebrews, 50-50. Some people believe it's him, it's his style, it's his method. Others say, but the timing. So if you give him half there, that's 13.5. He wrote half of the books of the New Testament, at least. Maybe more if you give him 14. So he knew he was useful here. And that's the heart of the man. The love he had for working for the Lord. So much so that I say, even though I know it's going to be easier for me, for your sakes, I am struggling to stick around. Amen. Or did the people make it easy for him? No. No. In a lot of epistles that Paul wrote, he will talk about people who had betrayed him, people loved the things of the world, and all the challenges he was going through. And another time he will say, I have run the race. When he was talking to his son Timothy, I have fulfilled my ministry. All that is waiting for me is the crown of life which my father will give unto me. That's a wonderful place to be. Or listen to the heart of the man again. A heart of love and a heart of responsibility. He still said, even though it's difficult to be on this side of eternity, I am also considering sticking here. Now, this is the meat of our message today. It's for us to take this text and impute it and apply it to our lives. Me, starting from me, very Reverend Sue, and everybody else in the congregation, and those joining us on Zoom, apply this text. Let's apply it to our lives. Where are we in our pilgrim's journey? Where do we want to be right now if we had a choice? What impact are we making in the body of Christ? Are we more of the solution or are we more of the problem in the body of Christ? And it's important that we process that and allow the Holy Spirit to help us and ask God for grace to help us. I've asked before if we do take a little time to read the short message we always put in the bulletin. It just to 
help us reflect. Sometimes the message is not so lengthy. It may be in just two paragraphs, paragraphs four and five, for example. For instance, you know, it says in today's message, brethren, have you ever pondered on who the most empathetic, generous, equitable, and just employer is? Have you ever thought about it? Who is this one that is so equitable, so generous, so empathetic, filled with justice? And the response is, I have. I've thought about it. His name is Yahweh, the miracle working God, the creator of heaven and earth. He lovingly created all things in his glorious image and gave us the divine privilege of being his own sons and daughters through faith in Christ Jesus. Our gospel reading for today, which we just listened to, Matthew 21 to 16, is not our text, but we read it also. Reminds us of our Lord's unfailing love, mercies, and grace upon us, even as he helps us fulfill the specific ministries into which he has called us to serve in his vineyard. His priceless reward is eternal life. Therefore, be encouraged and remain carefully employed in his divine service. Now, when we start from our text and look at the gospel today, do you see the connection? In the gospel, the owner of the vineyard, who is who? God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, called people into the vineyard to work. Some of us, he called you. You are a minister, and I will build you up until you become prelate. I'm using the structure of Methodist Church. Some of us, he called. I will build you until you become archbishop or bishop or presbyter. Some he called, you will never go into the ordained ministry. You will remain in the lay and you will be lay president. You will be steward. You will be knight of John Wesley. I'm giving you roles and functions that can resonate with us. You will form the council of knights. You will be vice president. You will be secretary roles and functions. And for all the work you are doing, you'll be treasurer. You'll be women's fellowship president. You will lead Bible study, coordinate it. You will lead Sunday school and looking at roles that resonate with us. You will attend programs. You will do revivals. Now when he did that, he said, when you do this in obedience, I am going to bless you. So he signed a contract with every human being he has created. Amen? Amen? But did you see what happened? When it was time for him to pay, he's generous, he's empathetic. He did not look at whether some came early or came late. He didn't look at whether your role was to become prelate or bishop. He didn't look at whether you became a knight or you were not given any award in church. What did he do? He gave the same reward to everybody. And did you see what happened? The people who do not have any capacity to give any reward, what did they, did they start doing? They started murmuring. And he called them and said, what, what I brought you in? I told you what I'll give you. What is your business? What I give to these other people? And this is a big challenge we have in the church today and in society. Some of us do not spend time to ask God what he wants us to do in church. We spend all our time helping other people do their jobs. They are not doing it well. They are not doing it well. And that's why the church cannot grow. And when I say the church, I don't mean our own de de denomination. I mean the church of God. That's why we are not growing fast enough. We were doing Bible study a couple of weeks back and we said that the most judgmental place is in church. Is in church. Now, we are not saying we should not set high values. Oh, please. God will not lower his values. Amen. Amen? But we are saying that we should come with the same empathy that God himself came to with us. We should come with love in our hearts. We, we should come with the same intention Apostle Paul had to say, look, I know the value I'm adding. 
And if I'm taken away, that value will suffer. And for that value, I can suffer and sacrifice certain things. That is the heart of the workmen that God wants in his vineyard. People who can help this end time ministry. And it's so important. It's so important. Let's just glance at what we read in Exodus 16, verses 2 to 15. What happened there? The greatest of all miracles are taking place in the life of the Israelites. And you know what fascinates me about human beings? When we think of the Israelites, we say, ah, no, I cannot do what they did. I can never do what they did. Amen? But I guarantee you, if, you tell, if we tell ourselves the truth right now, we are doing what they did over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. How do I mean? These people have seen God part the Red Sea. You see that kind of miracle? They had never seen it before. But listen, the moment they came out and they did not have the kind of food they wanted to eat, they said to Moses, why did he not leave them? In Egypt, where they had pots of meat. Hey! Which pots of meat where they were flogging them. They were slaves. They were flogging them. They were suffering. But they could only remember the pot of meat. They didn't remember God helping them cross the Red Sea. That's human. The flesh. Selective memory. Selective amnesia. Forgetting every good thing God has done and just holding on to the things that are yet to happen. That's not Apostle Paul. And that's not me or you or anybody here. Amen? I prophesy and I pray prophetically that for all of us listening to this message, it will not come unto us as judgment, but it will come unto us as encouragement and revelation and that the Holy Spirit will pull us out from any areas of our lives where we have fallen short of God's will and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But look at how patient God is. God said, don't worry. Go and tell them. I am going to visit them. And they are going to see bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. He said, I will send you bread of heaven. And we didn't read on. But when you read on, you see, even after eating the bread of heaven, they said there was no meat. Let us pause there. Brethren, I want us to open our Bibles to Matthew 24 14. Everyone. Everyone. Remain gainfully employed in God's divine service. That's the theme of this message. He's the one who employed you. It's not the people criticizing you. It is the people praying for you that matter. It is the people helping you that matter. Why? Because iron sharpened iron. Matthew 24, 14. Are we there? I don't know how your version reads it. I don't know how the version on the screen will read it. But I'll read it the way this Bible that I am reading from says it. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom of heaven must of necessity be preached throughout the world so that everyone in every nation may hear and it will stand as a witness to all the nations and then and only then will the end come. Hallelujah. I hear people talking about rapture. I hear people saying they are ready for rapture. I hear people saying, oh, let God come again. You know, when you lose your loved ones, 
you want rapture to come quickly because you know you will see them again at rapture. When you are old, you want rapture to come. There was an old man who said, look, I want to wait. If God can come, I don't want to sleep first before rapture. But many, many like that, they slept. But on rapture, they rise. But listen, listen. Until we take up the jobs God has given us in church and do them diligently. This gospel of necessity must be preached to everybody in every nation as a witness. Do you know why? Because when Jesus comes, when the trumpet sounds on rapture day, he doesn't want anybody to say, I never heard about you. I never heard. And this tells us that we have too much work to do. So much to do. Thank God, three years ago, the devil thought he was shutting down churches when he came and he promoted COVID. But to the glory of God, he was opening churches. Yesterday, we saw that a number of people couldn't make it to solution hour, but we were, we were joyful. You know why? Because we can download and we put it on our YouTube channel and they can watch it after us over and over. So COVID led to technology or better use of technology by the church and the gospel is reaching the unreached at all costs. So God is helping. And since God is helping, let's remember Apostle Paul's message again. For me to live is to be diligently and actively involved in the word of God, in spreading the gospel, in spreading scriptural holiness across the land. Is that your own testimony? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name.